It may be. Are we ready? Okay. Well, good morning. Thank you for the introduction. Um, if we're going to talk about mining and have a serious dialogue about sustainability, we must consider the entire life cycle of the products and the services that support our technology-driven society today. So this means starting at the mine. My goal during my presentation is going to be the following three things. First of all, I'm going to talk about why it is imperative that the mining industry engages in sustainable development. The second thing is, is I'd like to touch upon the transformative opportunities that exist for the mining industry, particularly in terms of economic and social opportunities for transformation. And then I'll conclude with a vision for the mine of the future and where we need to be going next. Before I do that, though, I'd like to take us on a very brief journey through mining history. The important point here is that humans throughout their history have had a very intimate uh, relationship with minerals and with mining, and we have ample evidence of that. Certainly, if you look at our art history, it's very clear. And one of my favorite, um, excuse me, I forgot to change the slide. One of my favorite um, examples of this is if you uh, ever go to Spain or France to the Pyrenees, you can go into the caves and see cave paintings that were made by some of the earliest humans. And these individuals had to go and mine uh, pigments, iron oxides, to make these images that are still there on the walls today. We also have examples of very extensive Neolithic uh, flint mines that can be visited. Several of these are UNESCO sites. So, you know, clearly mining was something that humans did from the very beginning at the outset. These early miners used hand tools, rather rudimentary. They were mining for uh, local markets. And so the same mining techniques, as this slide shows, uh, that were used by our early human ancestors are still being used today. Uh, certainly in the 19th century that was the case, even in the 21st century, particularly in developing nations where we have small and um, artisanal miners that are using these same methods. I'm not going to get into that discussion, but certainly artisanal mining is a very important aspect of uh, sustainable development in mining. At the same time, we've also developed a whole another method of mining, and this is the modern mining that we see today that many of us think of, and these are large-scale mining operations that are found around the world for extracting metals and minerals. And the advent of large-scale mining came about uh, soon after the Industrial Revolution, certainly not on this scale, but that's when the mechanization was uh, made available. But the real driver for going to large-scale mining was the ever-increasing demand for minerals. This slide shows uh, minerals in various sectors. I know it's difficult to read, but the tan area is crushed stone, sand, and gravel. And then uh, metals is shown in the uh, smaller, the, the blue in the middle, and the purple. And you can see that there's been a huge increase in the demand for minerals over this time period between 1900 and 2000. And also during this time period, we had a significant growth in global population. Those are the numbers shown on the bottom from about two, two and a half uh, billion people in 1950 to over five billion in the year 2000. So if we look um, into the future and where we're going to be going, between now and 2050, we're expecting to see the global population to continue to uh, grow to about uh, 9 billion by the year 2050. One of the important aspects of this, though, is that it's not just that the population is growing, but where this uh, growth is going to take place, and it's going to be disproportionately in less developed countries, which are shown in the uh, tan color on this slide, whereas in the more developed countries, population growth is going to stay relatively flat. So another aspect of this is that during this time period, there's also going to be, and we've already seen, a shift in the demographics of this population from uh, mostly rural to urban. And 
we saw that crossover in the demographic in about 2000, and really that was China where that was occurring, and it's still occurring today and will continue to occur into the future. So this is important because as the population shifts towards a more urban and middle class distribution, that will accelerate the demand for minerals and metals as a rising affluence drives consumption of manufactured goods and services. The other aspect of this that's really important to consider is that the regions of the world where populations will grow most rapidly and where this demographic shift will take place are also in many cases the regions of the world that, ha that host uh, the vast majority of Earth's remaining untapped mineral resources, and this is very important. Some examples include uh, many African countries, uh, Afghanistan, also parts of Southeast Asia. So um, additionally, many of these regions are regions on the globe where geopolitical risk is high. Um, these parts of the world are also parts of the world where technology is limited, and infrastructure is poor, sometimes even non-existent. So this uh, situation where we're going to have population growth, we're going to have um, higher demand for minerals, and we have uh, high geopolitical risk all taking place at the same place in these developing countries, this can create significant negative social and environmental consequences if we don't approach our management of how we um, do our mining projects in these regions of the world in a sustainable way. So uh, this is why we're having this discussion. This is why it's so vitally important. And what we face today as the mining industry is a global challenge. And I've really talked a lot about the kind of external pressures on the industry. Those are listed here on this slide, and I'll just recap those. First of all, the global supply of minerals is finite. Um, the demand for minerals, as I have shown, is expected to increase. And uh, we also expect and are already seeing that mining will shift from developed to developing nations because that's where the mineral resources are. So this means that mining companies have to change the way that they do business. They have to do business with transparency. They have to make decisions in a way that considers local and global impacts as well as social and environmental impacts and they have to do this with um, consideration for future generations. So this is a very complex and challenging situation. I haven't even mentioned some of the internal drivers, but some of the things that the industry is also facing at the same time is that on average, our deposits are deeper, our deposits are lower grade, we're starting to mine in regions of the world that are environmentally um, sensitive, uh, tropical regions, regions where we have high biodiversity, deserts where we don't have enough water to sustain or support the populations, much less a very um, water consumptive mining industry. We're also starting to mine in polar regions, deep sea floor, um, so all very sensitive and challenging environments. So. Um, now I'd like to just talk a minute about what is the um, definition of sustainable development in the context of mining. The one that's most often cited, and I think this is one that everybody is familiar with, is the 1987 uh, Brundtland Commission definition, and that basically says that sustainable development is development that meets the social, economic, and environmental, environmental needs of the present without compromising future generations to meet their needs. So many will argue that mining is not sustainable, and some of the reasons that are cited for this are the following. Um, mining consumes or uses non-renewable mineral resources. The second one is that it has significant environmental impacts. And then lastly, a single mineral deposit or mining operation um, has a finite life economically and physically, and that brings about social considerations and challenges which often are cited as reasons why mining is not sus sustainable. So um, this view does not take into account some things that are very specific to mining that I'd like to talk about now, and this has to do with the fact that we are mining a non-renewable resource. So mining is in the business of really doing one thing, 
and that is to convert non-renewable mineral resources into capital. And this capital is then used to sustain human development. So that's what sustainability is in the context of mining. And without mining, we wouldn't be able to um, sustain today's technology-based society and to fuel the growth of the world economy. So we have to have mining for these reasons. And even though the mining operation itself is not sustainable, mining can be managed and must be managed. This is our mandate to contribute to positive environmental, social, and economic outcomes. This is often referred to as the triple bottom line. Um, in mining, though, I'd like to add two additional um, aspects to this that I think pertain uniquely to mining. One is health and safety, and the other is resource efficiency. Health and safety is uh, core to the mining industry without having a safe um, work environment and a workforce that is healthy, uh, our uh, industry is not sustainable. So it's very much a core value and something that we put a lot of effort and um, resources into. A few words about resource efficiency. Resource efficiency is critically important because minerals have a finite life. Um, therefore, they must be extracted, processed, and used as efficiently as possible. The goal um, in doing this is to extend the life of these irreplaceable natural assets and also to extract the maximum value of these assets for human benefit. So this requires that we have a sustainable mineral supply, and that can be accomplished through a number of different ways. One is to, of course, discover and develop new resources, and this is something that um, exploration geologists do and has been ongoing and is you know, a critical part of the mining industry. The other is to innovate and find new ways to use functionally equivalent um, renewable materials for minerals. This is not going to solve the problem because um, minerals in the end will be the main thing that we have to use for our products, but we can do some things with substitution. We also um, need to focus on finding more efficient um, ways to process and to mine minerals to make sure that we're extracting as much of the material as possible, getting the best recovery as possible through the mine and the process. And then, of course, recycling. All right, now I'd like to shift focus to um, implementation of sustainable development in the mining industry and kind of where the industry is on the trajectory of sustainable development implementation. So implementation is taking place at three different levels within the industry. Um, the first at the highest level is um, industry-wide. About 15 years ago, the industry came together um, really as a, as a united front um, to have discussions around what it means to be sustainable and to mine. And from that came some principles, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, the next level is on the individual company level, uh, where companies are creating corporate uh, vision statements and mission statements, uh, policies and programs. They're doing GRI reporting. Um, and then the next level down is individual professionals. And individual professionals in the operations on the ground have a lot of um, opportunity to uh, really align themselves with the uh, corporate as well as industry-wide principles. And they have the opportunity to make sure that we are doing things as sustainably as possible. And I don't think that's something that we talk about as much as we probably need to. So I'm going to just go through a few slides um, for each of these just to talk about um, what our commitment is on industry-wide level. And I've just selected a few things. There are many other principles and frameworks that are out there, but I'd like to talk about um, ICMM's 10 principles. ICMM is the International Council on mining and metals. It's a consortium of 21 mining and metals companies along with 33 global mining associations. They came up about 10 years ago or so with specific cri criteria that all ICMM members are required to adopt. Um, I've got two slides that show the principles. I don't expect you necessarily to read them, but if you're interested, I encourage you to go to their website to learn more about these principles. Um, each of the companies that's a member company of this consor consortium is evaluated, evaluated against these principles annually. 
So this is um, just a summary of uh, the, the program, and it's about the 10 um, principles, which are the commitments, um, also public reporting, and then third-party independent assurance through um, certification. And that's their website there. All right, now um, another thing that happened um, really about the same time was a group of um, professionals came together. These are professionals representing 12 leading technical organizations within the mining industry. And um, they came together to write the Milos Declaration, which I'm showing here. And what this shows is that the, mi the minerals professional community that supports the industry is also committed to sustainable development and to doing what needs to be done to make sure that we elevate this to the highest levels and that it informs all of the business decisions that we're um, making as, as an industry. So those are some examples. If we look at it in terms of what's happening in individual mining company levels, a number of different um, initiatives taking place here. And really, these underline that the industry is on a path to be effective and credible as far as an industry-led path towards susta uh, sustainable development. Uh, certainly, uh, GRI reporting is important for the industry, and there is a uh, guideline that's specific for the mining and metals uh, sector. In addition to uh, GRI reporting, which provides transparency and performance measures as well as standard metrics, uh, companies um, are also seeking third-party um, certifications. Some examples, there aren't any for sustainable development now through ISO, but um, there, are, there are, is the ISO 14001 and the 26000, both of which address environmental and social sustainability. And then a third uh, aspect of this is that companies now are looking at ways to bring this to the operations level, and this is a big challenge. Operations level uh, engineers and professionals oftentimes aren't aware of what's happening on the higher level within their companies or within the industry. So we need a way to push it down into the operations. And so what's happening is there are a lot of metrics being developed about around the mining life cycle. This is a typical mining life cycle. It begins with public demand for minerals, followed by exploration to um, then develop uh, reserves and resources then um, those eventually, if they uh, pass certain economic uh, constraints, will be permitted for mining and then go into production. And then after mining is completed, there'll be uh, closure, and then the land will be developed for uh, future uses. So that's, that's a very high level um, mining life cycle. If we look at it as a framework for sustainable development, and I know that's a little bit difficult to read, and I really just wanted to show this as an example. And uh, what this is, is this is each stage of the mining life cycle, um, and then the activities that take place in each of those stages. And I'm only showing three. I think there were um, eight stages on that previous slide. But so I'm just showing the first three, the activities that take place in each, and then the environmental impacts that can happen at those stages, the social impacts, the economic impacts. I could also add, and probably should if I had room on the slide, some additional columns. That would be the resource efficiency, the health and safety, and then alignment with the um, 10 ICMM principles. So uh, this is, again, just an example of how you can use this framework to start developing specific metrics that can then be um, used at the operations level to support sustainable development and the GRI reporting in particular. So now I'd like to talk about the challenges and the opportunities that the individual mining professional has for contributing to sustainable development. And this really applies um, across all engineering disciplines. And this is actually from the World Federation of Engineering Organizations. And engineers have the opportunity to advocate for a positive future. And that's an important role that they need to play both with the public 
and how they interact with their communities, but also internally within their organization. There are a number of things listed on this slide that, and these are again just examples of things that engineers can do on the ground. And so they have a very, very important role to play. And we haven't always been doing a good job at um, helping engineers fill this role. Some of the challenges that engineers face, especially um, individual engineers, is that oftentimes they're not the decision maker. Oftentimes uh, they're being evaluated against short-term financial goals, and those many times are at odds with the long-term sustainable development um, missions and goals. And also, um, sometimes they'll find that they're at odds with the local community. So it's a very challenging uh, situation, and engineers, there are certain expectations for professionals, those are listed on this slide. And to help engineers navigate these challenges and be as effective as they can be, the World Federation of Engineering Organizations has put out a model code of practice. You can see on the slide uh, the 10 principles that engineers uh, can follow to establish their leadership in the area of sustainable development. So that's a summary of, of um, kind of where the industry is today. As much as I can bring into this in a 30-minute time slot, now I'd like to use the rest of my time just to talk about a, a vision for the future. So I'd like to talk about um, the upcycle, and this was mentioned at yesterday's plenary. Um, William McDonough and Michael Braungart in their 2013 book, uh, The Upcycle, Beyond Sustainability, uh, introduce a really interesting concept, and that is the idea of constantly improving and moving from being less bad to being more good, and they call this the upcycle. Really where we've been um, as an industry in the past is focusing on less bad. And oftentimes, that simply means being more efficient. And what they're saying here is efficiency is something that it's very easy for us to focus on because efficiency has direct contribution to improving your bottom line. We have to look beyond improving efficiency. We have to focus our efforts to not being just efficient, but to have even higher aspirations to make even more positive impact. And that's something that the mining industry has to create a vision for. What would this look like? Well, there's some leaders within the industry today who are really thinking about this. Um, and some of the things that are important to consider as we have this um, discussion and dialogue is to remember that mining provides the building blocks for human development. And really, no single industry, for, except for perhaps agriculture, uh, plays a similar role in terms of providing the essential raw materials that support our civilization. Um, mining, though, does something that agriculture doesn't do and can't do, and that it is that it generates wealth on a large scale, and this is something I've already alluded to. There was a book uh, written by Paul Collier. He's an economist at Oxford. It's a very interesting book. Um, it's actually a New York Times bestseller called The Bottom Billion, and um, he believes that the wealth generated from mining will provide a more permanent solution to economic disparity than um, foreign aid. And so he is a real believer that we need to take what we do with mining and take it to that next level and, and create opportunity and, and value socially. So this means that we need to change the way we see ourselves as an industry, and we have to enhance the value and the long-term con contribution of mining. And I've already um, talked about some of the motivating factors, but I'd just kind of like to recap those here because I kind of think that sets the stage for what the future needs to look like. So the motivating factors for really focusing on this and taking it to the next level is the continued world population growth, the consumption pattern of materials around the world, especially in the developing world versus the developed world, 
um, the imbalance between developing and developed nations in terms of opportunities and also the resource allocation that I talked about. Um, we have to maybe change our business model as far as how we price uh, resources to take into consideration scarcity as well as the environmental and social cost of production. And these are the kinds of things that companies are starting to have um, discussions about and certainly through ICMM and other consortiums. And uh, then lastly, um, efficiency use of the resource. And this isn't just the efficiency that improves the bottom line. This is the efficiency that prolongs the life of these non-renewable -re resources. So uh, that's the end of my presentation, and I would like to thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>